and welcome to GameSec. Yeah, it's a different looking episode. That's because I'm in my basement workshop and with me today is Nick McCracken. Come on in, Nick. How you doing? Good. So, if you've been looking for PVM monitors to play your classic video games on in RGB, you've probably been having a hard time. They're really hard to come by, especially these days. And that's where Nick here comes in. And Nick, what do you do? I mod consumer grade televisions to accept RGB video. Wow. So we're gonna mod this TV right here with RGB. As you can see, it's composite video only right now, but Nick's gonna take it apart and make it so it's RGB compatible. And by the way, this is not a tutorial, so don't do this unless you know exactly what you're doing. Nick does, I do not. So anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna take this apart. Screwdriver, old school, I like that. That's right. So you need to discharge these, right? Right. Yes, so any consumer grade television or any CRT for that matter is going to carry a very high voltage to it. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is basically take an alligator clip, something like this, mm -hmm. and hook it up to the grounding strap. And then once that's hooked up on one side, you hook up the other side to a, just a flat screwdriver mm -hmm. and you just basically just hook it up like that and then just make sure that you're not touching anything. You just slowly push it under and... Ah. Okay. <laughs> Wasn't as bad as I was expecting, yeah. but okay, we're good to go. Yeah. All right, so what are you gonna do next? What we're gonna do next is basically just give me more room to work here. So I'm just going to disconnect the anode cup here and disconnect any wires that are connected to this board here so I can pull it out. Any any wires coming from the tube or the chassis itself. So just get that out of the way so I can basically pull it out and work on it. Nice, okay. This particular TV doesn't have a lot of wires, really, so it's not too difficult. Um, a lot of Sony Trinitrons are pretty complicated, so you kind of have to Hansel and Gretel ginger bedger your way back so you know what goes where, or else you'll be in trouble when it comes time to assembling. What really kind of sucks about playing the Genesis, especially the Model 1 and Composite, is the rainbow artifacts on the uh, waterfalls. Now, a lot of people will argue that, hey, it's supposed to be there, you know, that's what the developers intended, but I am not a personal subscriber to that. It's okay if you are, but I, I want to play an RGB, so I'm really looking forward to seeing how this looks when it's done. What I'm doing here is I'm basically desoldering the leg of one resistor each for the R, G, and B signal here coming from the Micon to the jungle chip. Jungle chip! And what I'm going to do once that, that leg is, is desoldered is inject my own RGB signal coming from say my Sega Genesis or my Sega Saturn and that is going to be correctly muxed to allow the OSD signal coming from the, the TV itself to show through along with the video coming from whatever you want to input into that, that RGB. So what exactly is the jungle chip? Jungle chip! The jungle chip is a chip on a lot of OS, a lot of televisions that have an OSD. It has an array of functions, but what function will be taken advantage of here is what it does is it takes 
the signal from the, um, the mic on here and it gets injected RGB into it and that's what we piggyback on. It then transforms that into the RGB signal that it sends to the neck of the CRT itself. So what made you get into RGB modding consumer grade televisions? Basically, I always loved classic, classic gaming and I really wanted to experience what RGB was all about. I couldn't find any PVMs, BVMs, anything around me and it wasn't for a lack of trying. I mean I called broadcast stations over and over, emailed them, my hospitals, to see if any, you know, it always seems like an urban legend that somebody finds somebody that they're throwing away a truck full or something or they're upgrading to HGTV and they, they need to get rid of the old PVMs or BVMs. So I tried it all, couldn't figure it out, and then I wandered upon a, a thread on a, a forum where this guy talked about how he RGB modded a consumer grade television and that just fascinate, fascinated me and it's just like, I don't understand how this works, but I have time, I can figure it out. And I just, just from repeat looking at it over and over and over again, finally figured out what they were doing and the rest was history. So what are some of your favorite video game consoles? Oh, definitely. I was I was early Nintendo, you know, NES era, just because I didn't really know anyone that had a Sega, a Sega Master System. But once, you know, the Attitude Era hit, I was a Genesis boy. So, as Sega Genesis, I... It was in high school when Saturn hit, so I was more kind of interested in girls at the time, so I kind of, plus the Saturn was just such a disappointment in in some ways, you know. I, I, I would say now it's not a disappointment, but back then it was like, you'd see, oh, Sifted the Night came out, and it came out for the Saturn, but it's not as good, you know. Resident Evil came out, came out for the Saturn, but it's not as good. So I kind of skipped that era and then went big on the Dreamcast. So I would say, the two main consoles that I loved were the Dreamcast and the Genesis. I was all in on the Xbox. And I'm like, man, the Xbox came out, it's so much better than the PlayStation 2 in power. But have you heard about the PlayStation 3? The PlayStation 3 has got a cell processor and it's gonna connect to your, your refrigerator and your microwave and be this all-encompassing multimedia machine. And So why do you think that, why, why didn't RGB catch on in North America? That's a good question. I, I think the simplicity of the plugs and the sink itself might have been too much. I don't understand. I feel like we got robbed in the US by not having it. You look at all those consumer sets in Europe and it's just like, oh yeah, we got RGB. It's no, no big deal. Yeah, the first time I heard about RGB was back in the day in uh, EGM. They showed Batman and the Don't Walk sign, and it's like, you can get way better video quality from your Sega Genesis if you get these RGB cables, but you have to buy this expensive Commodore monitor, which of course I couldn't get. I was like, wow, man, I want that, I really want that, but there was nothing I could do. I gamed on a 13 inch black and white TV. Like one winter, like starting in October, they started, started heavily uh, advertising three games on that show, like during advertisements. One was Little Nemo the Dream Master. The other two were Fester's Quest and Dr. Mario. And I got all three that Christmas. Little Nemo the Dream Master was fine, but the other two, have, I've never run into a problem ever on a black and white monitor. Those two games relied on color a lot, a lot. You know, Dr. Mario, it's all color. You know, like you wanna put a red down, you don't wanna put a blue down. You can't tell the difference on a black and white monitor. Uh, Fester's Quest, the power-ups, some are one color, I don't know if it's green or blue, and then some are red, and if you you get the red ones, your weapon downgrades. And it'd just be like, that game was hard enough the way it was, but 
getting an upgrade and it's being like, I hope this isn't red, I hope this isn't red, and then you'd get it and be like, oh, no. These RGB signals need to be 75 ohms to ground. 75 ohms! Just making sure that the 75 ohm resistors are coming off the BNC video connector and then they'll go directly to ground. So did you have an NES back when it was new? Or no. No, you were strictly a Master System kid. Yeah, I didn't get an NES until I found one in a thrift store probably about 15 years ago. Really? Wow. Yeah, I was deprived. <laughs> but I borrowed a friend's NES a few times. Okay. So, and I would play it over at their houses. So I was definitely familiar with it right. and I enjoyed it. But I just never got around to getting one until quite some time ago. Yeah, I... I... When I started the third grade, I got an NES, and no one had an NES in my grade. Like, I was the video game guy. Like, people would come over to my house, or like, invite me over to like, help them beat Contra, or help them beat whatever game. Like, I want to see the end, come over, you know? And I just started the third grade, got an NES, and a girl in my class actually had an NES. And I liked, like, I always liked girls. Like, I remember back in the day, kids were like oh girls are gross you know like me I was like no I like I like girls my brother bought an the N Nintendo Power issue number one so it had a walkthrough of the Legend of Zelda so I'm like oh yeah I know Legend of Zelda I have I'm, I have that I'm awesome at it you know like so every day we would talk about the Legend of Zelda and it would be like I would just study the night before like okay the skeletons so yeah okay yeah the skeletons I blew right by on there they're no problem, you know? Until, like, she, like, her birthday was coming up, and she invited me to her slumber party, and we were going to play Legend of Zelda all night. And I was just like, even in third grade, I'm like, I'm toast. I am dead in the water. Like, I can bluff it, but when it comes time to play it, I, I won't know. I will not know. So I convinced my mom the weekend before to help me rent that game, and I played that game. And... And so I got it, I got my magazine out, and I started playing it, you know, just trying to figure out. So it seems natural when I play it, and nothing lined up. Nothing lined up. That was a walkthrough for the second quest. Mm. Second quest. Mm. So, man, I was dripping sweat, you know, I'm just trying to figure out as much as I could. I knew where she was at, so I'm just like, okay, well, I just gotta play, I gotta find all this stuff, you know. I played, I think, like 25 hours that, that weekend. You know, my thumb actually got I like callous like it hurt like it, my thumb hurt from playing so much and then the next weekend was her birthday the day before she told me her mom would let me come over because I was a boy so <laughs> it didn't matter so after this we're pretty much done electronically right we just have to mount the jacks to the chassis and put it all back together that's correct wow that's pretty quick all right uh, it didn't take them very long at all to do that, uh, less than an hour in fact, but now is the moment of the truth. Before we put everything back together and install the jacks, we got to test it to see if it works, which is a good idea. So why don't you go ahead and turn it on. Okay. Got the Genesis hooked up here with the RGB uh, start to BNC adapter. And I got Castle of Illusion in here, so let's go see if it works. Oh, hello. There you go. Hello. That looks really good. Wow, that looks a lot better than I expected. I'm serious. Good job. Okay, let's install the jacks. It really does look good.
All right, here are the jacks installed on the back of the TV. You got R, G, B in that order. And if you can remember the acronym RGB, then you should have absolutely no problem hooking up the correct colored wires to the TV. Now the composite in is actually for the sink. So if you want sink, you have to plug that in. Otherwise it's not gonna work. Now there's a switch up here. If you flip it up, the composite video input works as a composite video input. You flip it down and you get RGB. So that's basically how that works. And it's pretty awesome. And there you go, that really didn't take a long time. I mean, I was moving the camera around, telling him to wait so I could get a few different angles, but honestly, it did not take very long. And the results, in my opinion, are fantastic. I mean, the rainbow stripes are gone on that TV. I mean, some people don't like that, but personally, I really like the pixel clarity. I've got to ask, how many times have you done this? Uh, about 50 times. Oh, so I'm 51 now, I'm, I'm 51. So do you, is this a service you offer? Uh, yes, I do offer this service mm -hmm. for customers. Basically, they bring their TV to me, and if it is RGB moddable, I will do it for them for a fixed amount. And then also I do pick up CRTs wherever I can, mm -hmm. and then RGB mod them and sell them to customers. Okay. And uh, basically, I'm not trying to offer this. I'm not on here to offer this as a service. I just want people to know that this is something that they can do, right. you know, as long as they're not just rushing in, you know, take the proper precautions learn what you're doing before you get in there yeah don't use your tongue to test that anode very yes correct <laughs> and uh just take your time and you can do it and you can have rgb uh signals coming through to your crt without paying the huge amounts for a pvm or a bvm right and it's important to note that not necessarily every single crt is rgb moddable i've got one in the other room that i would have really liked to have done my old sony but unfortunately, Nick couldn't really find much information on it, and every TV is different. So, I mean, it's possible that it could be done, but we just don't know enough about it, not yet. So, you've, it really depends on the TV. So, anyway, I want to thank you for coming on the show and showing this. I mean, that's awesome, man. Thank you. So, please go away, and thank you for watching GameSec. Well, here it is. This is the very first TV that I could ever call my own. My mom gave this to me when I was like 13 or 14 years old so I could play video games in my own room instead of out in the main area bothering her. It's a nine inch RCA black and white. I think it's nine inches, I don't know, but who wants to play in black and white? I was watching Nick mod that Sony TV and it looks pretty easy, so why not mod this bad boy? You can tell where this video is going, right? That's right! RGB perfection! Let's do it!
Look at this ancient technology. This is gonna be easy.